Live on YouTube and Google+, it's Pageant Live. This is the place for glamour and style. Get great pageant tips you won't find anywhere else. Find out what you need to know before your next pageant. Post your questions and comments for our panel during the show. Learn great ideas about all aspects of pageantry. Here we go. Pageant Live starts right now. Hello and welcome to Pageant Live. I'm Stephanie McGrain and tonight I'm joined by the beautiful national title holders of the Miss United States organization. Let's meet these lovely ladies now starting with Candace. Hi Pageant Live. I'm Candace Dillard and I am your Miss United States 2013. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome Candace. And Jennifer, let's move on to you. Hello, Pageant Live. I'm very excited to come to you from North Carolina. I am your 2013 Ms. United States, Jennifer Jones. Welcome, Jennifer. And Savannah, let's meet you next. Hi, guys. I'm Savannah. I'm your Miss Junior Teen United States 2013, and I come from South Carolina. Welcome to you. And next, let's meet you, Laura. Hi everyone, I'm the Director of Marketing for the Miss United States Organization. I'm in Washington, D.C. I am also a former title holder, 2011 Miss United States. Thank you very much, Pageant Live, for having us back on the show. Well, it is wonderful having all of you ladies join us tonight. Now, I want to get started right away and jump in with some questions and ask you, uh, what you found was the most challenging thing the, in preparing for the national competition? What did you find the most difficult? Well, I, I can start. Um, I think for me, it was staying focused on myself. I, I love to talk and I love getting to know people, especially pageantry is my element. So when I'm at National Week or at a state pageant, I want to get to know the girls, I want to talk to everyone, and sometimes it can, you can get sidetracked sometimes. Um, and I think for me it was not comparing myself to the 50, 52, 53 other beautiful women that were there and, and just focusing on me and, and really honing in on what I wanted, what I wanted to accomplish as Miss District of Columbia and, and trying to become Miss United States. So I was constantly having to remind myself to put my tunnel vision on and focus on me and write in my journal and really just hone in on what I wanted to get out of the experience. Well, that's great advice. And remembering just to focus on yourself, not worry about anybody else and whatever else is going on. How about the rest of you ladies? I feel like my experience, I honestly have no regrets, but I truly, truly believe that the majority of that was because I did focus on me. I did what Candace was striving to do and advised the other ladies to do. When a lot of the girls chose to go sightseeing during National Week, I said, you know, Washington will always be there. I'm going to take this time to focus on me. I went to the gym. I went and got spray tan, took the time to eat a healthy meal, even though we were constantly busy, I still spent time with my sister queens from the state that we were there with and had a wonderful experience meeting additional queens and some lifelong friends, but I did focus on me and I think that is a wonderful thing to do because that is your week to shine and to show the judges and the organization who you are. Well, that's great and it sounds like it worked well for both of you ladies. And Savannah, what about you? Um, my biggest thing was I had to work on becoming the perfect me. You know, I'm just turned 16, so I'm kind of in that stage where I don't know who I want to be yet, and I don't have to decide. But, you know, for the judges to fall in love with me, I had to become, you know, the somebody you could relate to. I had to be the softball player. I had to be the horseback rider. I had to be your typical teenage girl. So I just threw everything together that I've learned in life and took all my life lessons to become me. So, And that is great. And, and so taking all of that into consideration, what is your advice to ladies who hope to pursue the crowns that you have on? What is your advice to them? 
my well, biggest advice, oops, sorry, Candace. Go ahead, go ahead, babe. Is just to be yourself because there are many of pageants that I have lost, but then the path that brought me, brought me to this crown and this title. So focus on you. You will find that fit of that organization. We hope the organization is the Miss United States organization, but everyone has a perfect fit. Everyone has a title for them to hold and for them to express. So even if you're frustrated, even if you may not have done what you should have done, just take it and make the best out of everything, and that makes you the queen already. Love and it. It it sounds really trite, but it's so true what Jennifer said, and <laughs> it does. But it for me, I've been competing like Jennifer for a long time. I was no stranger to the pageant industry. And every time I got a little bit better and I learned something and I took something new from that experience. But I think the difference between Candace two or three years ago and Candace this past year when I competed in the Miss United States system was I stopped, I think that, I, don't, I didn't stop caring, but I, I stopped caring. I stopped caring about what everyone was going to think. I stopped caring about um, you know, what the judges, will, will the judges love me? Will the other girls love me? Uh, I, need, I have to get the perfect gown. I have to have the perfect extensions in. I have to have the perfect lipstick. I have to have my, my body has to be exactly what I want it to be. And I, I took all of that training and all of, all of the experience that I had and, and I just, I trusted it. I trusted myself. I trusted what I knew and even what I didn't know. I, I went in and said, you know what, if it's meant to be, it's going to be. And if it's not meant to be, then there's something else. And, and a lot of times I give that advice to girls, you know, be yourself. But you don't always win. You don't always win. Everyone is, does not get the crown. But it's important to remember to take the other experiences away from what you're going through. It's not always about winning. And it's like, okay, yeah, right, Kina, she can say that because you have a crown on your head. But it's not. It really, I, I, didn't, I had not anticipated competing in the Miss United States system. And I was ready to retire and be finished. And I was content with where I was and the progress that I had made. So at the end of the day, it really is most important to be you. Because whether you win or you place high or, or you don't, you want to come away from it knowing that you were yourself and, and you gave everything that you had of your natural self. And that is enough. That should be enough. Well, Candace, I completely agree with you. And that's great advice for all of the future contestants. And Savannah, what about you? What is your advice to the future contestants? Well, I agree with Candace and Jennifer, so I'm going to reflect back to, you know, have faith in God because everything happens for a reason, and he'll give it to you whenever you're ready. You have to have the perfect time to shine, and he knows. Right, and I, I agree. I think timing is everything. Okay, well, ladies, now since you've been crowned and you've been enjoying your year, what has been your most favorite moment? Not including crowning, but other than that, what has been your most favorite moment so far? Uh, well, I actually have two favorite moments. Uh, and I think Laura was with me at one of them. It was recently at the Ms. Veteran America pageant. Uh, it was just a few weeks ago. And, and I am a military brat. My father, my stepfather, and my stepmother were all in the Air Force. So I was already well aware of uh, firsthand the sacrifices that our veterans have to make for this country every day. My stepmom did two tours in Afghanistan. So uh, my family sacrificed and we suffered a little bit um, for the greater good of our country. But just to see it, to see it on, on that level, combining the military atmosphere with the pageant atmosphere was something that I'd never seen before. And it was, it was very emotional for me. And Laura and I were both at the table kind of sniffing at, at several points in the evening. Uh, just, I was so overwhelmed a lot of times at uh, the bravery of a lot of the women. And you see, you know, strong men going out and fighting for our country and, 
and sacrificing and, and dying for for our freedom. But it it was just so overwhelming and so such a positive experience to see that our women are just as strong and just as brave and just as courageous as our men. And and they can look good in heels and a crown at the same time. It was it was so inspiring. Uh, and then my other great experience was when I went to Boston for Boston Fashion Week and I got to visit a music class. I have a music background. And the students in music class, they sang to me. And I was crying. I'm a crier. I cried the entire time just seeing the little kids and remembering being young and uh, coming up in choirs. That was a great experience for me as well. Oh, that is wonderful. It sounds like two fabulous memories that you will cherish forever. Of course, many, many more, and many more to make during your reign. And yes. I want to quickly introduce Lexi, who is joining us right now. Hello, Lexi. And I don't think Lexi... We can't quite hear her, but we will work on that. And when you're live, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> can you hear us? Can you, oh, we can can you hear me? You. Hello. Yes. Okay. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> thank you. It's so great to have you with us. Lexi, oh, thank you. will you tell us your, your full name and your title? Yes, my name is Lexi Richardson, and I am Miss Teen United States 2013. Well, welcome. So glad Thank you could you. join us. Thank you. And Lexi, we're just sharing our most favorite moments of the rain. I should say Hi. you guys, the most favorite, besides crowning. Crowning doesn't count. Right. But what what has been your most favorite moment? Let's see. Since then, I've worked a lot with my um, charity of choice, which is the Laura Turner Homes. It's pretty much a group home for adults with developmental disabilities. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a Halloween party, and we decorated pumpkins. We had treats, punch, games. Um, everyone had so much fun. And the adults that live at the home, they are about at an age seven level. So, um, you know, they had a blast. And usually with, you know, games and pumpkin painting and all that stuff, you know, they'd say, this is little kid stuff. We don't want to do this. But actually, they had a blast, and it turned into an annual thing. So now we get to have a pumpkin painting party every year. So that would be pretty, I think that's number one right now. Mm -hmm. That is so exciting. And I, I bet they were so excited to see you and your they beautiful were. crown. Oh, thank you. Yeah, actually, I let a few of the ladies try it on, and I've been working with them since I was 13. So they've seen me with a few crown and banners on, but none this sparkly. So they were pretty excited. Yes, and I, I love your crowns, ladies. They are gorgeous. <laughs> 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 well, Savannah and Jennifer, how about you? What what have been your most memorable moments? You better say something about me. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew. No, honestly, we Savannah and I have been very blessed with she lives in South Carolina and I live in North Carolina and we have had the opportunity to do majority of our appearances together. So all of my appearances, I do think of Savannah for all of them. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten the opportunity to work with Candace and Lexi as much, but I do have to say one of my personal favorite experiences would be going to Vegas with all four of the ladies because it was the first time we were together outside of winning, but everyone's excited after you win, like you said, the crowning moment, but it was the first time we actually got to spend time together and bond together and just get to get, get to know each other on a deeper level. And we brushed each other's hair. I mean, we had girl talk. It really was the cheesy slumber party situation. So to me, that was one of our... That was one of my favorite moments up to date is just the bonding with the sister queens because with Candace being in the D.C. area and Lexi being in Arizona, there's an opportunity with that without these titles, we would not have been able to become close friends. So I have truly enjoyed the sisterhood connection that we get from this organization. Oh my goodness, that sounds like so much fun. <laughs> fun time <laughs> with the girls. Love it. <laughs> well, Savannah, what about you? 
Well, Jennifer just took mine, so I didn't know what to do that. <laughs> but, um, no, I totally agree with the Vegas thing because we're all so diverse and um, different, but we all had the same dream and we conquered it, so that's what you know kind of brought us together. We do have a lot of things that are in common, so. Um, but one of my favorites, I don't really have a favorite because I've had a pretty great reign so far, and all my experiences have been different and unique, and all of them have made a big impact on, you know, my title so far, so, but I have to say, whenever me and Jennifer are together, I always have a good time, because she's not only, you know, my sister queen, but she's my best friend and role model, she's my bodyguard, my mama, my sister, she's everything, so, we can always have fun. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It, it sounds like it sounds like you ladies have such an incredible bond, an incredible sisterhood with one another, and I I just think that's amazing. I love it. Okay, now my next question for you is, what is one thing that you hope to accomplish during your reign? Who? Uh, I I can go. Oh, okay, go ahead. You go ahead, Candace. Okay. Um, well, I, uh, I started an organization called My Sister's Pizza when I was a student at Howard University in Washington, D.C., and I, it was very, it has always been very small, and working with young women has always been really important to me, and after winning my title, Miss United States, it's just been amazing the number of women that I've been able to meet, uh, young women, older women that want to help and be a part of my organization. Um, so my my biggest hope, my biggest wish is that I'm able to nationalize my sister's people and make it an organization that young girls all over the country can in some way participate in, whether that's starting smaller chapters in other parts of the country, or just being able to do the different activities that we do in D.C. with girls across the country. Um, so that would be the one thing that I hope to accomplish with this. Oh, that's wonderful, I, and it's great to hear that you're taking it on a national level. But how did your organization come to be? So when I was a sophomore or a junior, I, I think I was a junior, I started volunteering at uh, the House of Booth, which is, which is a battered women's shelter in D.C., and simultaneously I was working tutoring at a high school, a local high school in D.C., so those are high school. And uh, working with the girls at the Battered Women's Shelter, um, well, the way that it works is while the moms are in life skill classes, you are helping the kids, the girls and boys, do their homework and play with them depending on what age they are. And I was working with uh, one particular girl who was in the sixth grade who uh, couldn't read her homework. Uh, she was reading a worksheet and she probably was reading on maybe a third grade reading level, and she's in the sixth grade. Um, so for me, I, I'd never experienced that or seen it. I've grown up very blessed. I'm also a southern girl. I'm from, from Georgia originally. Uh, so I'd grown up very blessed and, and always never really had to want for much of anything. Um, so to come into an urban environment and to experience um, the disparity that a lot of our young women are facing here, it touched me in, in an interesting way. Um, and then in addition to that, working at the tutoring at the high school, I found that the girls were just, they lack life skills. Um, they, they lack a lot of the social skills that, that you need to be a functioning member of society. Um, they, they would oftentimes allow young men to speak to them in ways that they shouldn't. Uh, they were dressing in ways that I felt they shouldn't, that was not indicative of a young woman. And again, I, I saw that there was a need for, um, for, for someone or something to come in and, uh, and try in some way to help or, or fix whatever I could. So those two experiences kind of were the foundation of my sister's keeper. And it, it's grown a lot, like I said, since I was crowned. Um, we've done a lot of different activities, a lot of different events. 
locally, but I'm hoping to expand nationally soon. That is wonderful. And it sounds like you are definitely making a difference and working to change lives. So good for you. I, I love when people take their titles and, and really use it to make a difference. So that that's fabulous. I can't wait to see how it grows in the future and, and what else you, you accomplish with it. Thank Ladies, you. what about the rest of you? Well, I know personally I'm excited to travel to the other states just for, you know, small, just to see Miss Alabama Caroline Petty. She was one of my dearest friends. So I'm excited to see all of them. Um, but also I'm excited to work more with Best Buddies of ASU and also the Special Olympics. So I know that those are two things that I'm going to get, um, <clears throat> do a little bit more work with as time goes on in my reign. Now, Lexi, is this your personal platform? It is. It is. I work with adults with developmental disabilities, um, and I've worked with them, like I said, since I was 13. So six years almost, um, it's been a big part of my life, and I love it so much, more than anything that I think I've ever done in my 18 years of living. It really does um, just brighten up my day anytime I see anyone when I go to the Laura Turner Homes, anytime when I work with the Special Olympics, it turns a terrible week into the best week ever when I see a smile on one of their faces. Oh, that's wonderful. And and I'm sure you totally brighten their days, too. Oh, I hope so. I like to think that I do. I do. I like to think that. Well, Jennifer and Savannah, what about you? My biggest accomplishment is just to not turn down any appearances. Or uh, that's what I would like to achieve because even the smallest appearance makes an impact in people's lives. And although it's stressful on me, myself, my family, even the organization, because I'm on the go, I think I had three people today while I was at school go, You're everywhere. How are you standing in front of me? And I go, I don't know. I'm about to leave and go do an interview right now. <laughs> It's just a matter of applying yourself because this is one year. It is one year of your life that you are given and giving and sacrificing to this title to not only better yourself but to better the world and the people around you. Another personal goal that I have is my platform is chiropractic, back to help a chiropractic lifestyle. I am in my final year of chiropractic school and the biggest thing is I want to express to everyone is that if you have a spine, a backbone, you need to be getting your spine checked. Even if you don't get adjusted, you need to get checked. Just like you get your teeth checked. Just like you go to get your eyes checked. You need to get regular checked up, checkups for preventative care. And it's something that you can prevent future injuries. You can help with current injuries. It is a wellness program such as, again, the eye doctor and the dentist. And people don't think of it that way. So I want to change the perception of as many people's lives as possible so that you can live a better, healthy lifestyle. Well, that's good to know. And, and I think you're right. I think, you know, most people think, oh, go to the doctor, the eyes, but that's that's good to know. And, and I completely agree with you in really making the most. It sounds like you're so busy. All of you ladies are so busy, but really making the most of your year because it, it's truly what you make of it. It goes by so fast. You know, then the year is over and you want to be able to do as much as you possibly can. You're completely right because, again, you, you're, just, you're tired and you go, oh, I'd rather stay at home. I'd rather not put my makeup on for this. But if you think about it and you blink, <laughs> it'll be over with. Right. So. I completely, completely agree. agree. <laughs> <laughs> Especially being in college and everything down here is just so go, go, go. And I don't have my mom here to, you know, tell me, you know, you really should be doing this and you should get to the gym and filling up my schedule. So it's... I definitely agree that I need to stay busy. Otherwise, I'll be sitting in my room all the time. So. <laughs> and that's okay every once in a while because everyone needs a break. But that's again, nice. every once in a while. <laughs> well, Savannah, what do you hope to accomplish during your reign? Um, my number one thing I want to accomplish is to definitely keep promoting my platform, which is drug abuse awareness and prevention. Um, you know, it is such a travesty that's going on right now that everybody can face. You don't know who it's going to happen to. Um, I just want to let everybody know that, you know, it's not 
just a personal problem, it's a disease. And that's really what I want to get out there. Well, good for you. Good for you. And I know you will. I know you are, and I know you will. And now, Jennifer, I have a question for you. Concerning the Ms. category, um, tell us what's unique about that, and um, what are the qualifications for the Ms. division? The qualifications are 26 to 55 years old and currently not married. You can uh, have a child in a past relationship. You can have adopted a child. You can have been divorced, separated, or widowed. All of those things. The point is, is that you are single woman currently when you compete. And I feel like that that is so unique from any other system and any other pageant because once you, once you have a child or you are married, even if that relationship doesn't work out, then there's really no pageant for you to go to. And I feel like this title makes, it opens it up to a completely new spectrum of women that previously they were done. For instance, my best friend is widowed. Her husband died a year ago from brain cancer and she's 31 years old. Even though she has a voice to speak about the platform of brain cancer and this disease, without this particular title, she has no voice to launch that platform off of. And I personally do not have children, nor have I been married, but it still didn't stop me from competing. I'm just explaining the difference on how it makes it different from other systems and other titles. The uniqueness, I believe, of this is because of the larger age gap of 26 to 55, you get a more diverse group of women fighting for the title. These are women that have been there. They have done that. The life experiences that they have to share make them the perfect role models and mentors to every woman and every young lady out there. So I do feel like this is a we're tapping into a new group of audience that, again, previous pageants and previous titles have not tapped into. Well, that is great, and, and I guess I, I wasn't aware of the of the range of the age category. So I think that's fabulous to include, you know, so many more women in different stages of their life. That is great. Okay, now Jennifer and Savannah, question for you ladies. How do you transition between being an athlete and a beauty queen? I know you ladies have uh, big sports backgrounds, but how do you make the transition? You go first, Savannah. You go first. <laughs> I gotta yeah, think. Uh, okay, well, you think, you think. I think the biggest thing is, is it, to me, it's not as much as a transition of who I am. It's a transition of how I look. When people exactly. look at me on the sports field, I probably don't have on fake eyelashes. I probably don't right. have my nails done. <laughs> my hair is probably not perfectly manicured. So they see you in a different perspective, but I'm still the same person. I still work out. I still eat right. No matter where I am, it's just about putting on your game face. In a pageant, your game face is the hair, the makeup, the dress. When I play softball, my game face is a visor and cleats and socks. So it's a completely different perspective, but it is putting on your game face. I believe all pageant women are athletes because again it's just about their sport is a pageant and the preparation for pageantry is just as intense if not even more intense than playing sports because you do have to physically mentally emotionally everything has to be perfect for the best you that you can be so that is something that transitions it's just a matter of breaking the mold in the glass ceiling of people thinking that if you're an athlete, you're an athlete. If you're a pageant and a beauty queen, that's who you are. They, there are lines that are blurred there. It's just a matter of getting people to see that. Well, I agree completely. I was a gymnast for 10 years, and trying to change the way my body looked for nationals um, took a little bit longer than I expected. It did, but um, it was so worth it. And regardless of the way you train, it's as hard as you train. You know, I'm not doing pull-ups and I'm not tumbling, but I'm still in the gym and I'm running just as hard as I would for, you know, a full pass. So I, I agree with Jen completely 1,000%. 
because I know how difficult it is to make that transition. Yeah. And I'm so, so oh, Savannah, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Savannah is still currently playing sports. I know she's playing volleyball, and then she's yeah. getting transitioned into her softball team for her high school. While again, she's being our junior team queen. So tell us about that, Savannah. I think I'm a little different than Jennifer. I kind of do wear my fake eyelashes and I have my <laughs> fake hair and I don't have a face of makeup. So I guess that's the difference between us. Uh, still got to look good when you play good, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but no, I totally agree with her, though. I mean, there's a difference between your game face and your pageant face. Um, I think the biggest transition is having a team to back you up and then knowing once you go on stage, you know, if you, if you mess up or if you know, something doesn't go right, you you don't have your team to rely on. You know, have to kind of rely on yourself. And you say, oh, well, that's something I need to change in me. I can't put it on to the next person and say, oh, you need to try harder. It's me. So I guess that's only transition. That's a you, great point, Savannah, because it reminds me of golf, where golf is an individual sport, and so is pageantry in, yeah. in the grand scheme of it. Yeah. Do you feel like then, you know, coming from a sports background, athletic, you know, do you feel like that is sort of an advantage? Maybe, you know, mentally and, you know, competing. Do you think there's an advantage there? I personally believe because, again, you have to, there is advantage and a disadvantage. Like Savannah said, when you have a sports team, you can blame on other people, even though you shouldn't, as an athlete, you shouldn't blame. <laughs> a lot of people do. They use that as a crutch. Whereas other events, such as golf, and it, it is an individual sport, so it makes you to become determined on yourself and rely on yourself, and you have to look within to better yourself. So mentally, I think it is good, depending on what type of athlete that you are. Right. I... Personally, I started pageantry before I was a gymnast, and gymnastics is both, you know, an individual sport and a team sport. The entire team relies on your personal score. So I think, as weird as it may sound, pageantry helped me in gymnastics because it was all on me. And I always put myself in the position as if the team relied on me. And that's kind of how I feel when I'm on stage, too, because my family and my friends, my support team, they're my team. So I always, when I'm on the stage, that's who I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for myself, but I'm also doing it to, you know, get, give pride for the team. You know, when I was in D.C., I was representing Arizona. So I definitely think that they coincide pageantry and individual sports and team sports. Well, I think that's what makes our organization unique is this, as all the girls have mentioned, the sisterhood, it's teamwork, and especially going to nationals, you guys got really yeah. close with your Arizona sisters, with your North Carolina, South Carolina, D.C. sisters, and, you know, you're not going at it alone. So in this organization, we do hold the divisions at the same time on the state and national stage, so you, you have that teamwork element that you really don't have in a lot of other pageants. It's not all about you all of the time. Exactly. You know, you do. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's really a special element of our pageant. Absolutely, yes. And I am glad that you ladies are stressing that today, you know, and telling our viewers. I think it's fabulous. And Savannah, I understand that you recently traveled to Paris to model for Fashion Week. Yeah. So exciting. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> All right, well, um, the designer who made my gown for the pageant, the United States pageant, Gorgeous. he asked me yeah. right before I won, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, he told me that he would love for me to go and travel with him to do New York and Paris Fashion Week, and at first I thought he was joking. So I started laughing. I was like, no, not me, because, you know, um, I'm curvy. I have the J-Lo booty. You know, I'm a lot different than <laughs> your everyday model. So... <laughs> Um, I was like, you know, okay, I'm going to do this. That would look great, you know, to be like, hey, I went to Paris and modeled in Paris Fashion Week, just that opportunity. So I've been really trying to take every opportunity that's thrown my way. And I absolutely love Paris. I fell in love. Um, it's a lot like New York, just the architecture is so beautiful. Um, I mean, a lot of what people say about Paris is true. I mean, the people aren't as nice as usual, but I guess that's what makes it an experience. 
I don't know. But Paris Fashion Week was awesome. I got to meet a whole bunch of people that I would have never been able to meet. Um, and I made lifelong friends whenever I was there, people that I still keep in touch with that were from Paris and everywhere, practically. So I had a really good time. Oh, my Play God. was so exciting. Play Ride. Ride. <laughs> Savannah, I... It was nine I was, hours. Um, the flight was nine hours? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Savannah, I was, I was going to tell you this, Savannah. I had several girls that would be eligible for the junior teen division come up to me and ask me, I guess they'd seen photos of you in Paris and they were asking me about your experience and I hadn't talked to you so I didn't know. But to go back to your J-Lo booty comment, I, I <laughs> love that. I love that you were actually the one to chosen to go to Paris for several reasons. One, because um, you represent an entire group of women who are, at your age, you're going through a lot of changes. Like you said, you don't know who you are all the time, and your body is changing, your mental processes are growing and changing. Um, you're becoming a young woman, and a lot of the time um, you lack confidence uh, just because you're not sure who you are when you're going in life. I think it was so great that someone as amazing as you, but with a body like Aww. yours, you're not, you're not a stick, you're not a tiny, tiny girl, you have a natural, beautiful, young woman's body, and I think what you did for so many girls your age, um, it can't even be counted, it can't even be measured in numbers, I think you, you infuse confidence in so many young girls just by going and being you, with your J-Lo booty and all, <laughs> um, going to Paris and, and being fabulous and showing them that you can be and you can do whatever you want at whatever size, whatever age, as long as you put your mind to it. So I, I loved that that you uh, marketed yourself and put yourself out there and really went went for it. Mm -hmm. So that was awesome to watch. You can get Thank it right, you. Savannah. Mm -hmm. It's not a JLo booty. It's a Southern booty. Okay. That, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Hospitality. Have it. That's a corner <laughs> of red booty. Yes, yes. No, but I'm glad that I was able to go. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, all the models were asking me what size I was backstage, and I just kind of looked at them. I was like, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. As long as you look good, girl, you look good. <laughs> I was like, oh, no comment. You don't want to know. I just said, bigger than you. you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on. Tell them what your actual answer was, Savannah. Tell them what it was when they asked your size. I said curvy. <laughs> Stop! Oh my goodness, I love that. I'm gonna use that. That's what do. I will. I'd be like, do you have a curvy? Oh, you do. Okay. Right. I'll take I guess because everybody's different. I mean, nobody's the same, and that's what people forget sometimes. Yeah. We're all unique. We're all how we're supposed to be for a reason. And I'm glad that, like Candace was saying, that was really nice. Thank you. It was nice. And I was actually watching. My dad had recorded the live broadcast of my crowning. <gasps> I watched it last night. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's my, I, I almost cried. I, do, I cry every time I watch it. it. And I had to mute it because... My dad was, well, he was crying, and he would be completely embarrassed if anybody knew that. Aww. But he was just so excited. So everything he said, his voice would shake, and he was praying Aww. on the video. It was great. But Aww. watching it, it Aww. was true. But re-watching it, usually when you think, you, I mean, I've been to Miss USA two years in a row, and when you think of Miss Teen United States or Miss United States, Ms. Junior Teen, you think of this tall model le exactly legs for days and when I was standing next to Caroline there's a large difference between <laughs> us I'm a very very tiny girl and so oh, just girl. to no. see that it was so awesome because I know a lot of my friends actually are pretty petite like me so you think that I don't know just to me it was great seeing that you know, it doesn't matter how tall you are, how long your legs are, how long or anything, how long your eyelashes are, how long your hair is. It doesn't matter. It just matters about you. And that, I think that Miss United States really captured that when they crowned us. Yeah. So we're just all so great, aren't we, ladies? <laughs> yeah. 
I can relate. Speaking of crowning videos. Yeah. That, oh, wait. What were you going to say? I was going to say, speaking of crowning videos, I wish I would stop crying for like, you know, five minutes to enjoy <laughs> no, getting the crown put on my head. My me. cry face was so ugly. <laughs> it's okay. I covered my face. And over like the entire area, as they said, Arizona, Lexi Richardson, take your walk. Someone said, don't cover your face because this is exactly what I did. I was like, oh my oh goodness. My God. <laughs> and I turned around. That's like my thing. Anytime anyone says, Lexi Richardson, you win. I just turn around, start walking the other way, drop to the floor, cry, cover my face. It's kind of my thing now. So they have to tell me to stop doing that. It's just so hard. It's just so hard because when you're in that moment, you think they're not going to, you know, as much as you want them to say, Arizona or DC, it's it's just it's the like shocking it's exactly. So they say yeah. it, and your body goes limp, and oh, geez. I really yeah. thought I was gonna pass. Woo. Yeah, just got right out here. here. Let's see. Yeah. I have to go back to what else were from home earlier yeah. about short girl. Yes, that's a question that I get all the time, and I want to set the record straight while we're alive on Pageant Live. <laughs> Short girls, if you can hear me, knock, 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 you can win. Yeah, you can. Don't Woo! let your vertical challenge deter <laughs> you your from, vertical challenge. from trying. Yeah, it, it's a vertical challenge. It you know. is, because do you know how hard it is to find, like, eight-inch heels in Arizona? <laughs> yeah. They're oh, nowhere. No, Candace found them. She found them. I can't <laughs> tell you, I can't <laughs> tell you <laughs> what it is online. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook me, Facebook me out there, and and I'll share my secret with you guys. But but even whether you have the shoes or not, in all seriousness, it's about how you carry yourself. And if you feel like you're six feet tall, then you that will come out on stage. You will exude six foot tallness on stage. Oh. And just I I don't and I really want to make that a point. It's never I've never felt short. In my life, ever. Even when I'm in a crowd of, you know, six foot people, five foot nine people, I've never felt short. And it, it really comes from within and how you feel inside. And if that's how you put yourself out there on that runway, on that stage, it will come across that way. Don't let that be a deterrent. Don't let that keep you from accomplishing your dream or, or trying it. Even if, if it's not your dream, you just want to try it. But I don't think I can do it because I'm short. No. No, ma'am. I'm going to tell you. Don't, don't let that stop you. Exactly. You Love hearing so that. Things. Love it. And I'm petite, too. So that's fabulous. Yeah, exact Yay. sisterhood. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, at 5'4", I am the tallest female on my mother's side. So oh I'm representing, God. okay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, Lexi, you're from Arizona, yes. and I understand that the program there is very strong. It has a very strong sisterhood, so tell us more about that. Yes, we do. Um, I was actually thinking about this question as I was driving home from class. Um, you know, I think it's because all of the girls who compete at Arizona United States, we've all worked so hard depending on which area it is, depending on if it's interview. We work so hard on our questions or we've worked so hard going to the gym every day and eating right or competing over and over again to win a title. I think we all have that same, you know, mentality. We know how hard it is to get to where we are. And especially um, the queens that I'm reigning with currently, um, they've all competed multiple times for the title. Um, I, too, it was my second time competing for the Arizona United States team title, and it just feels so good to know that your hard work is paying off, and so I think that that's one of the, the links that keeps us together, because we all know that because of determination, and because of not giving up, that we got, you know, our dreams and our prayers are answered, so I think that that's one reason why we're so close, and also because... None of us take ourselves too seriously, which I think is super important. Um, we all are comfortable enough with ourselves to be completely goofy and to be, you know, just ourselves at all times. We know when it's time to be serious, but also we know when, 
you know, enough is enough. Take off the heels, put on some pajamas, and let's go eat some, you know, chocolate-covered strawberries. We actually had a slumber party this weekend, and it was the best, seriously the best slumber party of my life. We watched so many pageant videos, and then we watched Mamma Mia, and we were singing to it. We were doing our opening number to the videos and eating so much junk food, I can't right now. I can't. I'm drinking Fun green time. tea right now. I can't. No more caffeine. I can't deal with it. <laughs> and it makes all the difference. You know, when you when you have that bond, you have that sisterhood, you, you can just have fun with people, you have that connection, it, it makes all the difference in the world. It really does. So and, you know, I've been competing yeah. for almost 13 years, and I have never genuinely loved my sister queens the way that I do this year. I've never been so close to them, and I've never been friends with them. My missus, actually, when I moved into this apartment um, for school, she came over, and we all went grocery shopping. Her, my mom, her daughter, and um, my grandma, and we all went grocery shopping, and we had lunch, and it's just, it really is a sisterhood, and I've never really felt that with any other system, um, except for Arizona and United States, and then going to United States and winning the title, and just being with these girls for a few days in Las Vegas, it was crazy how much we got along. Because usually, you know, the stereotype of pageant girls is, oh, they don't have friends. They're not very nice to each other. Actually, <laughs> we're diva. We, just, we <laughs> are, right? We're just so just better than everyone. But really, we're all just genuinely down to earth, and we all just got along so well. I remember... Savannah and I were in our pajamas, and I had my puppy, and she was so tiny, and we were just passing her around, and it was just the best. Aww. Oh, my gosh, you guys. She's so big now, and she's a terror. Oh she just eats everything, and she's you such a monster. She bites everyone. I will. I'll send you guys a picture. Oh my she's gosh, I want to see a picture, too. Yes. She okay. is so cute. Like I, I look at that one picture of... Um, I forget. It, the little girl that was holding her in the room, Lexi where she was, like, on her back with her paws up in the air. It was yes. so cute. Yes, and oh. she still sleeps like that, actually. She sleeps with her arms and legs straight out. And, <laughs> if she, and when she's sleeping, she's out. You can move her. You can turn her, put her upside down. She's not waking up. She's, she's like a real baby. It's the weirdest thing. But when she's awake, she's a complete terror. I just I love Aww. her so much. And actually... I named her after Caroline, Miss Teen Alabama, because we were talking Aww. about it. <laughs> and I know we were talking about it at nationals, and I think it was at orientation. It was one of the first days, and I was like, yeah, I'm getting a pug. She goes, no, you're not. And I was like, I am. She goes, will you name it after me? I was like, of course I will. And I didn't even think. Like <laughs> My mom said, after if you win, you know, you get two pugs. You get a boy and a girl. And oh. I won nationals, and I got a pug, and I was like, Caroline! So it was just, it was just a perfect, it's just, it's been a pretty perfect year, I'm not going to lie, everything's going super well, so knock on wood, you know. See, there's sisterhood for you, you know, how many people can yeah. say that? So, you know, if you truly were not loving these ladies, having a fabulous experience, you would not have chosen to name your dog that. So. Exactly. Case See, people, <laughs> take a page out of the Arizona United States and <laughs> Team United States book. All about and I have, to, I have to shout out my DC and my Maryland and my Delaware sister team. Um, I, I love, love, love them. And I actually, I competed with my team, Colby Muhammad, Miss <gasps> Team DC United States um, at Miss oh, DC USA. Gosh. And that's how we um, became really good friends. And we also both, she's still a student at Howard and I went to Howard. So we also had that connection. But that is I just, so weird. I love her. I love her so much. Hi, hi, baby queen. And then um, Sierra, Sierra Nicole. She is the current Miss Maryland United States, and I also met her while competing at DC USA. And I just I love her. Like we when we get together, it's like we've been friends for years. And the, the, those those are my sisters. I love 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 them. And. We'll, we'll always have a special pageant bond, but it's nice to kind of, like you were saying, Lexi, um, step out of the pageant world and take off the crown and just sit around and, and gossip and, and eat inappropriate food. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so good. Yeah. So it's, I, I love those girls. 
Candace, well, it's weird that you say that because I met my miss, Arlene, when we were both competing at USA. At USA? Exactly. Yeah. And then we go to orientation for Arizona United States because I had gotten first runner up and I think she got second runner up. My mm -hmm. mom walked straight across the room and she said, you should have won USA. I'm so happy you're here because you and my daughter are going to win. She walked away, came, sat next to me, oh. and then Arlene was, Arlene oh. was just kind of sitting there like, did that just happen? I don't know who's... And then she turned around. She saw my mom sitting next to me. She's like, oh, my gosh. So then she came over, and we were talking all throughout orientation. We kind of got in trouble, but it's fine. We're not going to talk oh, about it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about oh, that? Yeah. Um, well, now, Candace, I heard you mention about Howard University. And I understand you were just presented with a very special award. Can you tell us about that? Well, I had the honor and the privilege of riding in the Howard University homecoming parade on Saturday. And for me, I could almost cry talking about this. Howard, Howard University is um, it's a great institution, and it's, it's a wonderful, it was a wonderful experience um, to do my college education there. But, and I think you have to be a Howard Bison to understand that once once you have gone through the experience of being a bison, there's there's just nothing like it. Um, the lessons that I learned there, and the friends that I made there, the bonds that I made there, the net connections that I've made from from being at Howard, um, it are unmatched. And uh, to to have watched the parade all well three out of four years. Um, and then to actually be in it and to be riding in the car and waving at all my friends and waving at old classmates that I hadn't, hadn't seen in years, there, there, is, there just isn't a feeling like that. It was, it was humbling and it was, it was just a, I have to stop and move back. It was, it was a great experience for me and it was something that I'll never forget. Um, I love Howard. Hi, Howard. University. Somebody, else, no, somebody no. out there named Howard is like, <laughs> oh, hi, <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Oh, okay, hi Howard. Just Howard University. Right. Right. <laughs> well, that is wonderful. And and Candace, now I know that the national charity is re Relay for Life, and yeah. I understand that you will be challenging the 2014 Miss Delegates to participate in their region. But can you tell us about this partnership? So this partnership was actually facilitated by my one of probably my favorite sister queen, my predecessor, Miss United States 2012, Miss Ashley Smith. Um, she through the American Cancer Society, and uh, and I love Ashley. She's she's a perfect example of poise and elegance, and um, she's a goofball, and I, I love her. So the fact that she used her connections to facilitate this philanthropic union is great. Um, and for me to be able to work with ACS and to work with Relay for Life um, is an honor. And we've all lost someone to cancer or dealt with someone who um, has gone through a, a terrible situation with cancer. So ACS is definitely an organization that can reach and reach out and touch a lot of lives because everyone knows someone who's been affected in some way um, by by the tragedies that cancer can cause. Um, so for me to be able to facilitate and challenge my my future sister queen, it's really exciting, and I can't wait to see um, how much we can raise. And I'm actually going to be working with Howard University. They're doing a Relay for Life next year in April, I think it's April 16th, is their Relay for Life. So I'll be there for that one. And then American University is also doing a Relay for Life, which is located in Washington, D.C. as well. So I'll be, I'll be participating in their Relay for Life. Um, so I'm, just, I'm really excited to, to be a part of a fundraising event to help um, people who are dealing with the awful, awful cancer bed. Well, that's wonderful. And, yeah, I... I agree. Like with what you said, I, I think most people, you know, if not everyone, is touched some way, you know, by that disease. So right. good for you for making a difference. Okay, ladies. All right. Now you have to tell us, tell our viewers, what are the best parts about your pageant organization? 
Okay, well, I'll go. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I think we all stressed this a lot when we were talking at least once or twice. Um, sisterhood and family, that is the absolute best thing, number one, hands down, um, that I can think of at least, um, about this, um, this system. And I remember answering a question similar, or answering it similarly to, um, my own stage question. I said that I would spread the word that this is the best system that I've ever competed in and how much of a sisterhood and a bond that all of us have. Um, even if, you know, two friends don't win the same title, it's the fact that they competed together and they went through the journey together and I think that that is most important that we all have that similarity, that we've all been through the journey and we can, you know, share that with one another. So sisterhood and friendship and the bond. That's number and one for me. <laughs> awesome. Shout out to Ms. Laura. For always being there to help us with all our internet stuff and always getting us prepared for everything. Right. Laura, yeah. Woo. <laughs> Laura, you're awesome. Um, I, I think one of the greatest things, as you can tell by these ladies, that even when you win the national title, you can be who you are. You can set your own goals and you can achieve them. You're not bound by anything within the organization. You know, we do opportunities to these ladies and um, marketing and photo shoots and fashion and all sorts of things but you heard them all talk about the service or organizations that are close to their hearts um, and so you can be yourself and and keep striving farther and farther with this organization I think on uh, on a technical level I think it's great that each category is weighted equally <laughs> I love, just think about what that means. So when you look at other systems, they'll weigh talent significantly more than others, other, other, um, other phases of competition, or they'll weigh the onstage question, and, and so girls can start to get nervous or, or they obsess over, I have to be better in this portion than I am in this portion, I have to be... Uh, more well-versed on the interview, and it doesn't really matter if my gown is pretty. Miss United States, each category is weighted equally. So think about what that means. That means they want a well-rounded title holder. They want someone who can speak in public on stage question, who can sit across the table from you and articulate her thoughts and opinions. That's the interview. They want someone who has poise and confidence and a sense of fashion, that's on state, or that's the uh, evening gown competition. They want someone who, who has all of those different categories and weighted equally. And I, I respect that part of the Miss United States organization just because it really shows you that they're putting their money where their mouth is and they really do want someone who is well-rounded and who can really deliver everything that they need to the public. I love that. That's definitely what you ladies are. You're beautiful. You can speak well. You know, you're definitely well-rounded, you know, serving the community. So, fabulous title holders. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Something, the reason why I chose United States was, again, the sisterhood, first and foremost. But the other thing is, is although we have the four title holders here, we also have two younger title holders, the preteen and the Little Miss divisions. And we are separate within the organization, but we're still under one umbrella. They are our Little Miss title holders within the United States system. And to be able to mentor them directly and get to know those ladies, they are the future Miss United States and the future of the title holders. That's who <laughs> That's they right. are. So we are directly Hi, growing our own. That's what they are. And so I just believe that is something that makes our system unique and it's another proof of the sisterhood because we are grooming them from eight years old up all the mm -hmm. way to 55. There's no range. <laughs> There's no differences. So, And that is something, again, very unique about the system because other systems, they may have princesses, but they don't actually have title holders mm -hmm. that are and part of it, and that travel with the big girls, maybe not to everything, but to a lot of events, and you have that opportunity to mentor on a personal level. 
I know we're getting ready to wrap up, Stephanie, but I just want to mention I was on the phone with a contestant today out of Delaware, and uh, she said to me, she's 29, and she's going to enter the Miss Division. Um, I was really floored because she said, you know, I've been looking for a pageant for a long time. She's been in pageants for years. She's been very successful in pageants. And she said, I've been looking for a pageant that takes us seriously. She said, I, you know, page other pageants that she knows of will drop you at a certain time of the year, you know, um, or they try to make you be somebody you're not, you know, because of their organizational goals. So I thought that that was really representative of why all of these ladies entered. You know, we do take it seriously and we want, you know, from that preteen little miss age all the way up to miss teen, junior teen and miss ages to take it seriously and to be prepared to change your life. Wonderful. And Laura, how can we find out more? How can the viewers find out about the organization? Do you have a website, Facebook? We can we yeah. follow you on Twitter? <laughs> What's yeah. best for the viewers to do? Sure. Uh, Twitter handle is at go miss us. And each of these ladies here have their own Twitter handles as well. Um, Facebook, you'll find us there, and MissUnitedStates.com. Now is the time that states are open for application, and uh, pageants will be starting in January with North Carolina, South Carolina. Woo! Yes. Woo! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're ramping up here. It's the time. It's the time to get serious about it. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody watching from Arizona, definitely go and sign up and come yes. hang out with. All of us, because I always have parties, and I bring my puppy and pizza, so you guys should do <laughs> Puppy and oh, pizza. Yeah. Awesome. Right. We have to, Savannah and I have to give a shout-out to Miss Ray and the Miss North Carolina, Oregon, North Carolina, South Carolina organization. Mm -hmm. That woman treats you like the queen that you are. That is hands down all that she does. She dedicates her life to her queens. We just did an appearance with her this past weekend. We are constantly with her. She constantly calls us, texts us. She even got all the girls in the Carolinas charm bracelets, and she's been collecting charms for us throughout our reign to remember oh. our reign. And that That's is something so that she she's initiated. Awesome. She really is a fabulous director within the state system. and. She got us, all of us, prepared to the best of our ability. She might not be able to do every single thing herself, but if she can't sew it, she will find the lady that does. And then, and that, Savannah's gown busted three times at nationals, and you would have three. never known that. Wow. The weight of her skirt busted her zipper three times, even though it fit her like a glove, and our director found it and took care of it. I mean, that's just proof in the project right there. All the state directors are, are fabulous within the North within the United States system. Chris and Chris and Laura have done an amazing job in recruiting these state directors that will make it happen and that will make this organization what it is. Incredible, incredible. Well, ladies, it's about time for us to wrap up. So, Candace, let's start with you. Any last thoughts or words for the viewers? Well, I do want to thank all of the viewers and, and all of the supporters. I get so much love on Facebook and on Instagram um, from, from young women and young men and everyone who just, you know, thanking me for, for being out there and for, for being so open and public. I really do try to share the real Candace with you guys as quickly as, as I may be. Um, so I really appreciate all of your support, and I appreciate all of the young women who um, are entrusting me with, um, they trust me enough to come to me and, and ask me questions and, and ask for my advice and ask me what I think they should do um, about competing in this system, or should they come here, or what should their dress look like, or what should their hair look like. I really do... Uh, appreciate that and I, it, it's humbling and, and I value that you value my opinion so much so thank you for that um, and then I did want to share my my social media channels with you all I'm on Instagram at tandygal09 that's C-A-N-D-E-E-G-A-L-09 
309 and on Facebook at Miss United States. Uh, and then on Twitter, it's uh, at The Real Miss US. So, see you there. Wonderful. Thank you, Candace. And Jennifer, let's move on to you. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I just, again, thank you so much for all the love and support, such as Candace has said, that we all ladies have received nationwide and even internationally. I have received personally international support. The My big sister within the pageant, Dr. Karen, she was in Japan during the majority of her reign, and a lot of her followers still support me. And that's just a wonderful experience that just, again, solidifies the sisterhood that this organization has. I'm telling you, no matter how old you are, please compete. Please look into our system, look into our sisterhood, because win, lose, or draw, you will walk out of there with friendships and life-changing experiences. Like Candace, I'd like to share my tags to everything. I am on Facebook as Ms. MS United States, Twitter, The Real MS US, Instagram, MS United States. Oh my goodness, I'm on Tumblr as Jen Jones. I'm on everything. You name it, I'm there. So please contact me with any questions, any thoughts. I will be there. I might not answer you right away, but I promise I will answer you. I'm there for you. I, my service is to you, the United States, as your queen this year. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Yes, ma'am. And Lexi, let's move on to you. All righty. Um, since you guys have already said thank you for pretty much everything that I was going to say, <laughs> um, I will say thank you to everybody who's reached out and invited me and my fellow sister queens to all of the amazing events that we have had the opportunity to go to. Um, personally, I got to go to a car show for a little boy named Maddie. Um, he has Down syndrome, and so his family was raising money so um, they could, you know, support down to some research. So little things like that, you know, sending an email saying, congratulations, I really hope you can make it to this event or that event. I want to say thank you to everybody who has um, sent us those messages and who continue to. And I will gladly give you my information as well. I'm on Instagram at Lexi Saray, which is at L-E-X-E-S-A-R-A-Y. I am on Facebook at... Um, Miss Teen United States 2013 and Twitter at at the real Miss Teen US. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you. And Savannah, let's move on to you. I'm with Lexi since everybody said thank you, but I mean I'll say it again. Um thank you for all the supporters out there and the viewers that are watching us and taking time out of their night to see you know, how we feel about everything and what our likes and dislikes are and getting taking the time to get to know us. Um, thank you for everybody who has been a part of our success. You truly are the one beneath our wings. And um, my social media stuff is Miss Junior Teen United States 2013 on Facebook. And then I think my Twitter's at Miss Junior Teen US. Yeah. Follow me, like my page, do everything. I need a whole bunch. Thank you. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Savannah. And Laura, let's move on to you. I just want to say thank you to our national director, Chris Wilmer. Hi, Chris! Who, <laughs> if he's not watching now, he'll probably watch it someday, sometime soon. But, uh, you know, he, he's done a lot. He's the visionary for this pageant organization, and he cares very much about the direction that we're headed and then also I want to say hello and thank you to the directors who are experienced I'm not gonna say old but you know, the, <laughs> the seasoned, seasoned. Uh, directors exactly seasoned. and the new directors welcome uh, we are a very much growing organization we've increased I think by 200 or 250 percent in our contestants Yay. Um, in the last two years, so it's a, a great opportunity here. Hi, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Thank you, ladies, 
so much for joining us tonight on Pageant Live. Love you, ladies. You are incredible. Thank you. And thank you so much. So excited to be watching you. Oh, thank gosh, you for thank having you. us. We'll, of course, be watching everything that you continue to do within the organization and after your reign. And, and just so excited to have you on tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks yeah. to the viewers for tuning in. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching. And until next Tuesday night, everyone, be sure to shine bright like a diamond. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.